Angelique joins us now via Zoom. And here in the studio is legal expert and elder law attorney, Anne Margaret Carosa. Welcome, everybody, to the show. Welcome. Thanks. Angelique, tell us about her conservatorship and, and tell us why you think it's problematic. Back in 2013-ish, she went to the hospital and then she was transferred to a rest home. She hated the rest home and she was very upset about being there. So when she got out of the rest home, she stated that she wanted me to make a video for her so that she could state what she wanted in her life. And everything that she has stated um, to me and to others has been not done. And right now I'm just very concerned for her. You mentioned her son, Angelique, do you think her son is behind uh, taking the missing items? No, I don't think he's behind taking the missing items because for several years, six years, she did, her son did not appear. He was not there. He was not present. He came maybe two times to visit her. Um, but there are other people who were in a position of authority who should have been making sure that nothing was missing off of her walls. So, Anne Margaret, as an attorney specializing in elder law, how common is this? And please walk us through your, your perception of this issue. Yeah, so unfortunately, this situation is increasingly common. And I credit Angelique and I credit the Free Britney movement mm -hmm. for really shining a spotlight on areas for possible reform within conservatorships. But this case is a little bit different from the Brittany case because here there are reports that we had a uh, dementia-related diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And when we have that, it is incumbent upon a court to ensure that the conservatee's life is disrupted as little as mm -hmm. possible, which is why it's very troubling that the house was sold. It seems like the conservator almost has carte blanche. They could just do what they want, and it puts the individual at risk, right? So what type of oversight is there? And then when does it cross the line, especially in this case, to elder abuse? Yeah, absolutely. So we see a lot of financial abuse as it relates to elderly conservatees. The conservator is supposed to account for every last cent. So maybe that needs to be done more rigorously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would also put under the category of abuse an overly restrictive guardianship. You know, we as a nation value personal liberty mm -hmm. above all else. And when there has to be a conservatorship, the laws of all 50 states say that it must be of the least restrictive means possible.